the AI have its turn. Yeah, we Brits have a lot of good old classic comedy. Yeah, unfortunately, modern comedy is dead, I think. I like old comedy better. And by old, I, um, I mean, I love Black Adder. I love the young ones. Um, you know, or, or, you know, which definitely is part um, uh, comedy, especially, you know, old um, Tom Baker, Doctor Who is definitely a comedic elements even when he's you know being sort of serious uh but i really love things like the marx brothers um truly old stuff yeah well Oh, hello, hello. Oh, I, I watched all of that. Um, I actually quite often say I actually traveled to, I was going to be going to Britain anyways, but specifically traveled to London to see the play starring the cast of Hello, Hello um, many, many years ago. Yeah, they're flying in supplies. I thought they were. I wasn't sure. So yeah, love that series. Fools and horses. Um, fools and horses. Dad's army. Right. Okay. Of Dad's army. I haven't watched much of it. I've watched a few episodes. I've been meaning to watch the series. Yeah. That that was and th this was way back when it was still being done. Um, you know, still in TV production. I forget the year, but traveling anyways. And another thing, I specifically made sure I went to see was Jeremy Brett playing uh, Sherlock Holmes when he was playing in London. Um, uh, sort of a, you know, two-man play kind of thing. It was a long time ago, but I've seen Jeremy Brett in person playing Sherlock Holmes. I forget what the, the th which theater it was, but yeah. Went and traveled to see that, too. I mean, I was going to be going that summer or whatever anyways to Britain and on a, you know, I've lived lived in Britain for less than six months once, traveled there many times, but so I was going to be there, you know, hanging out, any, you know, going and doing the tourist thing anyways, but making sure that I got to see that. Those are two particular um, plays that I made appointment to, you know, made sure I saw. Because Jeremy Brett, to me, is still the best Sherlock Holmes Ever at least Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes as opposed to reimaginings. And there's some good reimaginings, don't get me wrong, but um Okay, so things are going fairly well. I forgot to do look at the turn summary. We're gonna do make yeah AI do the let's yeah, execute air directive. Just do whatever you think is best. I don't know how much air we have left. Okay, very little losses. Fine. Let's take a look at the front here. Okay, I don't, I honestly don't know how much to worry about forces from here. Um, I don't think they're going to be appearing here, at least I hope not, because, the, you know, Germany, the German army, I believe, is capturing this railway south. Not that they're necessarily getting into Stalingrad at this point. I don't know the dates. So I'm not really worried too much about forces here, but keeping something here just sort of in case some, I don't know, some Cossacks or something sort of show up on that front. Now we've concentrated our, our armor division. And I love that, you know, we can click here. I love that this is, I mean, these are, you know, 9 and 26. 26 for us means action points. 9 is its attack strength. But it's not just some random number, you know, we have damaged, ready and damaged um, tanks, you know, uh, 
Panzer 3Js, Panzer 3Ls, five Panzer 4F2s, those are the long barrel guns, nine Panzer 4Fs, which are the short barrel guns, same tank, just gun length different, 16 functional Panzer 2Cs. So we've got all this stuff, some support to Hiwis. These are um, Russian volunteers uh, helping out mostly with logistics uh, type tasks within the division. So that this unit is made up of all this stuff and some of damage, some functional. And I think depending on activity levels and whatnot, how quickly the damage units get back or damage, you know, um, equipment gets back into function. Uh, Reimagining just tend to shit on the original like better, and I really hate the trend. Yeah, um, I can see that in in many cases. Uh, but I, to some degree, I don't know. Again, talking old movies, if you guys know anything about that, but um, Basil Rathbone. And Nigel Bruce um, played Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, respectively. And I would call that a reimagining. That was back in the late 30s and early 40s, you know, before and basically during World War II and shortly after World War II. And I love both of those characters playing. And I watch this who I watched as playing those, those, those actors playing those characters. But they made Watson out to be a bumbling uh, person in it, so that's a reimagining, um, you know. And eh, Sherlock Holmes, a little over dramatic with ba you know Basil Rathbone playing him, really good. I would have that a little more of a reimagine than actually playing Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. So it's not necessarily, you know, um, modern, but it just, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's see how well we can start off with so we don't forget. Here, let's click. Okay. We want to repair the railway. Come here. Repair the railway. Railway is flowing. The spice must flow. Okay, so we got to there this turn. Hopefully they're repairing other railways. Uh, the series of German minute was faithful to Holmes. Yes, absolutely. Hello, Steppy one, and Brett was for me the perfect. Yes, uh, I've read the complete works of Holmes many back when I was you know a teenager, um, and whatnot. Inspired by the by the series, and yeah, that is the most faithful. I mean, they sort of kind of because you know. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was re writing for the Strand magazine, and he wasn't entirely consistent internally with his, um, uh, you know, canon. Uh, there's conflicts of when is Ho when is Watson living with Holmes? When isn't he? Is he married or not? And various things. And does he have more than one wife? And there's a bunch of bunch of stuff all around that if you really sort of dig into it. Um, and so, yeah, you know, but I think they do a very honest, with Jeremy Brett, a very honest look at it and trying to to make it all sort of work. And Harvard News, oh, um, yep, yeah, read some of the loose narrative ends. Just that, yeah, yeah, and, and it's, you know, it... it, it it's a good it's a good collection of of works it isn't perfect he wasn't trying to be if you will perfect okay they're getting supplies so what i well even though we're assaulting okay well they got pushed out we succeeded it looks like And they surrendered. Very good. Okay. Very good. So our assault there has cleared that up. Probably had significant losses, but all right. Uh, oh, good. We're getting a mountain br uh, brigade here. So let's continue to move these guys. Yeah, and we might as well just take that there. 
Let's move these guys here. We're just going to use these Romanian cavalry units as, you know, screening forces and whatnot. Jumped in with the DLC and ran into show. Well, I hope it was. I hope it's fun. I, I normally stay on the the topic of, um, uh, you know, the game that I'm playing. But you know, just a second, since we do have some new people here. Um, I'm Gamer1745. I really love streaming for Slytherin TV and playing their games. They're great and talking about it. My big thing is. To talk about to play the games while and while sort of being distracted talking about history, um, so I'm not necessarily playing the best. So don't take this as like the optimum way to play this campaign. This is me just playing it while talk hanging out with you guys. Um, but I do have my own YouTube channel, and that's linked to it. If you want to open up that, in which I do just this is play games and talk on and off topic uh, there, and I stream for myself mostly on the weekends on Twitch, and you can follow that there as well if you want to get more of me and but everybody should hit that follow button here because the more you watch on slithering tv the more slith coins you earn and those you can redeem for um free games and dlcs so uh and there's many great streamers here um to to watch and with each with a different style and but I, but they're really good uh, we're talking about classic, yes. Oh, geez, and Worcester. I, I've not read um, any um, Roadhouse, but I've watched the, the, the series, uh, and I loved it. And then I also watched another um, another PG Roadhouse um, series set in some manner or something that isn't a geez and Worcester. I like that as well. About one of the episodes had a, you know, a lord something or other with his prize pig and whatnot and really funny stuff i should own stock in slithery matrix as i own a ton of their games yep 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 i'm sure you should okay so we're gonna move this division down here they're under the romanian army corps here we have a romanian mountain division um we'll move it up too so now this corps has two divisions under it we may see because they got a 37 again on this thing on this this game it varies from game to game uh the first number on your forces is your attack strength the second number is your movement or action points or however you want to define it now on the enemy unit is the first number is their expected attack strength what you understand it to be and their second number is their defensive strength so um and they will see your units the same or whatever just so that you can you know sort of eyeball how how strong some of these units are and whether you should be attacking them or not so if this guy's attack is three in my defense i don't know what it would be but it's probably a little better than two or something so he's pretty safe at just being a screening force but is no real hopes at pushing in him there but now getting a german infantry division and a romanian mountain division we might be able to push in here um what's the, i have to admit i have not really um dived into war in the east on a serious level but all the tips you are giving well i hope i'm hope i'm helpful i am not the best expert um would it be xtrg use um uh, or is it Richard is coming up next? Oh, let me take a look. Um, after me, so I'm still got, you know, another 40 plus minutes here. Uh, but let me just quick and see who's coming up after me here. Um, I think I have it. Yeah, let me. And it's with uh, the new game, uh, which I haven't played yet. Uh, yes, after me is Richard, Richard York. With Flashpoint Campaigns, Southern Storm just out, or is coming out, coming out. I don't think it's out yet. It's just coming out very soon, so that should be a preview. He'll be coming up, in, like I say, in about 40 minutes. So he's very good. Um, and then after him is Modern uh, uh, Command Modern Operations XTRG. And he is, he is better than I am at War in the East 2, at least in the actual playing of the game, for sure. So, yeah. 
Yeah, so they they're they're probably or well, I'm not probably they're the better ones to to follow on the details of gameplay and how best to maximize your victories as it were. Okay. Um yeah, let's We're going to going to make one attack. Boot them, don't tickle them. I believe that's sort of something of a Udarian quote. So push there. Now Close enough. Good. Easier. Yeah, they're both still in this HQ range. Now we probably don't need it to hit them with both. Or do we? Yeah, let's hit them with deliberate attack from the armor division. Trying to keep them from forming too much of a line here. Keep trying to push, drive these guys south. At least that's sort of the the goal. Okay. Um, Night Phoenix is a good strategy gamer too. I don't know him. I'm sure there's a lot of people I don't know, so it's not any probably a much bigger. Um, one than I am, but I don't know him. Uh, well, the number one rule is win is don't lose, right? Absolutely, that's the key. I'm playing a lot of campaign series Vietnam. Well, that's a very good game, too. I played a bit of it, um, still getting used to the gameplay, the campaign series mechanics. Yeah, okay, so now I really this isn't terrible, but. And that is just is not good enough that I really want to hit hit it straight on. So that up. And now down here, and we're trying to use these forces, and we may attach them to somebody much more local here at HQ soon. These Cossack forces. Um, Make sure I'm only selecting the Cossack forces, and that's one that I think could be good for screening out here on the edge. And yeah, we'll find an HQ locally here. Yeah, Vinking gets to make the attack. Okay, goody. Okay, let's see. You have plenty of forces under your command. So do you, but yeah, okay, let's, 50 second, let's shift you to, yeah, there we go. There we go. Now, 
that is a little better organized now here he has two divisions under his command no three divisions um this guy doesn't have anybody under his command so let's oh, um yeah third panzer okay yeah i know some of how to manage all of this it's just not the best expert at it okay the security forces um yeah they're supposed to be here for you know anti-partisan and whatnot operations here Well, and I don't really want to hold the line with them at all, but I do sort of want to keep them ready just in case of, I don't know, a breakthrough or something here. I'm, I'm feeling a little, little vulnerable here. Um, Well, I guess I could theoretically move through these mountains, but I'm not going to try now with this motorized force. So let's just come to here. And it's this part of the front, as it were. I don't know how much good or bad the AI is going to react to that, but... We'll just do that. Okay, let's look. We got some more forces coming over from the Crimean Peninsula. Anything else back here? Don't think so. Let's do that. But don't map too slowly. New forces in. Because there are reinforcements at various turn points. I don't remember what they are. I could look them up. This takes a bit too long. Okay. AI depot management, I'm remembering this three. Okay, so well I think we're gonna we're gonna use these forces here and push here, try to push here. Down along the coast here a bit. And well maybe we should move one of the divisions over here or something. We'll see about that. But if we can push along the coast, we sort of so solve some of the problem here. And anything here I want to move around? No, not really. Okay. I'm hoping they're making good decisions on all these. Logistical flights and whatnot. Now we're into the Soviet turn. We'll get maybe a little bit of look around, but not much. Oh, they're attacking us. Uh oh. They're not. Are they allowed to attack us? I thought only I got to attack them. Uh oh. Uh oh. I pushed too far. That was bad. Okay, they're attacking Vinking. Are the undefeatable SS going to be able to hold them off? The Super Legion soldiers? Pushed us back, that's for sure. Okay. I hope you caught the sarcasm there. I mean, they were, Viking was a good division, yes, but propaganda makes them out as being you know, super 
superheroes. Yeah, super suckers, yeah. There were good divisions. Diebstand, Arta, das, uh, das Reich, they, those were good divisions. Um, partially just because they got a lot of premium equipment and a lot of, um, you know, when other divisions were, were you know, barely keeping uh, their forces functional, the, Waff the premium, premium Waffen SS divisions were getting re reinforced, re equipped with, with uh, you know, more manpower, more um, supplies. And then there were really, really sucky, including a couple of divisions that, you know, of various other ethnic groups that they recruit in that mutiny and have trouble. And, you know, so they run the gamut of, you know, Waffen SS divisions from, from some of the worst combat type units to some of the best in German army, but not necessarily because they're super soldiers, just they're well equipped. Because what happens is, um, because this war, and to a function, to a point, it, it has to be run in a map room. To a point, it has to. Okay, well, this time we lost 6,000 soldiers instead of normally been about 2,500 per turn. So a little over 6,000, 148 guns, 37 tanks. So we much heavier because it only, normally had been like four or five tanks per turn. So we lost a lot more. Yeah, Primo Equipment. Yeah, well, Joachim Piper, relatively good commander, yes. But there's, there become, you know, like I said, because this is a world war, to, to some degree, on all sides, the war has to be run in some map room well away from the front. Because you can't, you know, I've read, um, uh, you know, works by and, and biographies of people like Monstein and Guderian, and how that they're, you know, whether they're in, as a as a division commander or a corps commander, um, they're bouncing around between units up in the front and sometimes getting, you know, very sort of dangerous situations because they're moving from one battalion headquarters to another battalion headquarters or division headquarters. And so they're because they're trying to understand the the state of their forces that they're commanding, you know, the actual state. Um, and so that's what they're doing. Well, you can't do that just because one person or small collection of people can't do that on a on a war this scale. So it has to be run in the map room to some degree. But it's for Germany, it's overrun in the map room by Hitler as he loses, and we've ta I've talked about this before, loses trust in his, um, especially his high command of his officers. As the war is going on, so, there, so there's two elements to the problem here. As the war is going on, he believes that he can't trust his officers and his army his, that's been in the field for a while is becoming defeatist. That's part of it. And his replacements, his new units, because they are young men, they're more likely to have grown up in the Hitler youth and gone up through that pattern. So they're more highly indoctrinated. That's part of it. So that's part of it. But the other part of it is, because this is a map room run war, sort of like what we're doing here, is looking at, um, you know, they're normally drawn on the map instead of having counters but is a um, is looking and seeing the number of units and presuming, you know, because here we, here we go. Here, this is a division. All these three units here are sp spread up. This is, you know, so a division is holding this section of the front. And um, so they're looking at that and they're seeing that as a division. In fact, you know, in Prussia, you know, the Wolf Slayer or Berlin or wherever the, the you know, the, the time and command headquarters is. And so they're seeing that as a functional division. And so what they wanted, what they get down to doing, and Hitler does this, as again, as he's taking over command more and more, he wants to add another division to this fight. So he wants to raise up, you know, equip up another division and send it out to the front. 
instead of sending that same equipment to reinforce all of these divisions that are already here in both manpower and equipment. So um, it really becomes a problem. These divisions, you know, um, will get weaker and weaker in over time. They're barely kept up to sort of minimum effective strength. And so a lot of, you know, the, the new equipment, new replacements are coming in, whether it's to just increase the number of divisions on the front or are thought maybe more reliably, uh, you know, ideologically um, reliable units coming in. That's definitely part of it. Where the Waffen SS, there's limitations of various types, including how many Germans they can, um, uh, you know, currently man in, in their formation, German soldiers. It's sort of an agreement. That's why there's so many foreign units. And early on, they're either trying to get other, other Aryans, quote unquote, because it's sort of an artificial term. Yes, there's genetics, but the Nazis, it's, it's a lot of artificial bullshit. Um, but then later, even quote unquote non Aryans of various types are recruited up. Uh, oh, and then other non Aryans, but early on, also Germans that are German ethnic people, you know, a lot of in the former um, Austro Hungarian Empire outside of Austria that are not in Germany. The Waffen SS can sort of freely recruit, at least from the German perspective, sometimes the nations do object that having their people. I'm taken away from, but do request, um, you know, uh, recruit other Germans in it that don't count against the strength. That's why units like Vinking exist. That is, I think it had one German regiment. The um, rest were basically Scandinavians uh, in that unit in that division. But other ones would be have a lot of like um, Hungarian nationally born um, Germans or whatever in the in other units. And it didn't count against how big the Waffen SS could be. But all of these units, because they were ideologically trusted, because they were able to um, get their own supply chain, uh, if you will, and, and it varies over t at time in different stations. So these units are the units that get topped up sometimes with you know the best equipment sometimes not the best sometimes junk equipment um you'll see uh um the prince eugen division uh made up of ethnic somebody or others um you know ethnic german somebody or other is mainly operating in um yugoslavia and they're and they're they're set up as a mountain division but they have like a company of uh, french renault um, R35 tanks uh, as you know support so these aren't tanks that would be good on the Russian front or anything but hey shooting at partisans um, they're just fine so sometimes it's junk equipment sometimes it's you know the latest and greatest that they're getting pushed into um, these formations so instead of and they are growing the Waffen SS over time most assuredly but that is part of the reason the Waffen SS are in fact better than a lot of standard divisions. It's not because they're super soldiers. It's not because they have, um, you know, they're super better trained or anything like that. Um, they are ideologically more motivated, so they are probably willing to accept casualties a little higher and things like that versus a standard unit. But it's, it's you know, it's the equipment, it's the logistics, it's the support that they get where other divisions are denied is why they often stand up so much. Not as much as Stalin and his infamous purges of his military. Yeah, well, yeah, oh, well, Stalin was, was... He meddled in the, well, he meddled disastrously, you know, before the war starts with the purges and whatnot. Constant meddling because he has, unlike Germany, um, he has his ideological troops, and particularly the NKVD, spread everywhere. And 
it's only the the SS terror against um, uh, German army units really only happens after the the plot, you know, the the bombing plot, um, Stauffenberg's plot to kill Hitler and overthrow the Nazis and whatnot. It's really only after that do you have various types of SS running around and arresting, um, you know, whether it's officers or soldiers or whatnot. Prior to then. Um, more or less, you know, more or less the army command could go, you know, fuck off to, to, a, to an SS, uh, any sort of unit. You're not in our chain of command. You know, they show up. You're not in our chain of command. You don't have the ability to arrest us. Just, you know, fuck off and go, 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 go commit some atrocities on some civilian population, you know, which they are, of course, doing. Um, so, yeah, but and it really, really takes... To, a, to arrest a soldier or anybody, you know, officer or anybody, really takes permission up in very high commands prior to the, assa the, the assassination attempt on Hitler for the, uh, for the SS to do anything like that. It's after that point they, there is an SS terror. But from prior, you know, from, you know, before the war starts through to the ending of the war, there is a constant NKVD terror going on within the Soviet army that is always present, always in every factor that every, every whether it's a, a private to a, you know, a field marshal has to make, you know, when he gets an order to assault some position, do it now. And the field marshal knows, well, if I order my troops to do it now, Something, you know, he knows something is wrong with the attack. But if I can do it tomorrow, I'll have this other brigade, this other division here ready to go, and we will win for sure. But I have orders to do it now. And, you know, if you're Zukov or somebody who um, has a success record, you can probably get away with telling your NKVD minder, nope, we're attacking tomorrow. So and then if tomorrow the attack is very successful and everything goes well, you you continue to be you know in good graces and, and continue on. Now if that fails, well then or something else is perceived to fail because you didn't carry out your part of the plan or something like that, then you could be in real trouble. And real trouble could be an immediate execution or just sent off to the gulags or just turned into a private or you know whatever it might be. So there's the constant fear. So there really isn't a fear. Because again, um, hey Richard, yes, I know you're coming up in a few minutes. To get part of the story, what happens here, and I know I mentioned it earlier, um, with this campaign. List is put into our, in charge of Army Group A, which is coming down into here. He comes in and gets stalled, primarily because of logistics. Not because he doesn't have enough forces. I mean, that's part of it. That's something of an issue. But a lot of it is just logistical support. So he, you know, Yodel gets sent down to tell him to get his ass moving. Uh, he says, basically, no, I need all this logistic support. When Yodel takes that, in, and Yodel, in, in, to List's face, in my understanding, you know, agrees with him, takes this back to Hitler. Hitler, you know, throws a tantrum and fires List temporarily taking command of Army Group A, which is what we're commanding here, and then turning it over to von Kleist, which has been commanding the Panzers as part of this campaign. But List at this, so at this point, you know, in sometime in, in 42 here, late 42, he retires home. And that's it. He's, he's done. He's, he's now a, a retired officer, or, or well, he's probably still in the Army, but he's retired from any command. He's not given a command for the rest of the war. So that, up until, again, the last day's post-assassination attempt, that is normally the, the fate of any officer failing to, you know, carry out commands to attack or to do whatever. So that's sort of the, the, the story of this, this campaign here. Okay, so Let's see if we can. Um, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, execute error directives. That's why I can't do anything. Keep forgetting that part. Something I just looked at. Okay, looks like some operations are going out. 
And yes, everybody, do do hang around because Richard of York will be playing um, uh, the Southern um, Southern Storm new game coming soon. Okay, now now is what I'm do here is see about. No, no, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Oh, is it out now? Okay, good. I knew it was coming. I didn't know. Oh, okay, we do have forces coming up here in the north, like I was sort of worried about. Good thing I... I think I'd just rather obliterate this force if I can. Well, I'll retreat it. It's amazing. Well, good to hear. Okay, so we had been pushed back here, and I pushed too far out. Uh, well, well, I needed more than I sent in, that's for sure. I'm well, not down the division. Let's. No, not all those. There. Well, should have probably done it. Well. I'm going to try to use economy of forces. Okay, hello, um, Blind Wolfie. Well, what you probably remember is um, War in the East. This is War in the East too. So, uh, and this is the, um, you know, so it is an evolution of the game uh, from before, and it's out earlier this year, I believe. Does Steel Inferno add anything other than campaigns and scenarios? Um, not that I know of. I think it is just campaign scenarios added. I, I think any other improvements get um, rolled into the game, you know, structural improvements, I think. Um, so I, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, yes. Hello, Beam Slam. Good to have you here. You bet. Surely brilliantly unfolding campaign. Well, I don't know if the campaign's unfolding, but I'm brilliant, of course. Right. Okay. Well, what we could see about with this here, maybe bring in that. Yeah, so yeah, do stay tuned for, for Richard's stuff coming up in about what five minutes. So I just want to sort of make a few good moves here. Um, I don't know if anything I'm going to make with brilliant moves. Keep them from encircling me too far. Here, here is one That one back there. Keeping command radius. And thanks for following, TARDIS mechanic. I I'm just acceptable at playing this game. I'm not any great 
Okay, let's repair the railways with the, any great general on this. I just talk a lot while playing. That's my charm. So. I'll move him up to here. He's way weak. Okay, he's commanding. Okay, this is the... Uh, I'm going to stack that Panzer Division on that unit there. Now, down here, we had this success. We've taken that. Um, let's move you down this way. Let's find yes, the Romanian cavalry. Here, there, these guys, let's. Move that way. I'm going to do a prepared attack here. Yeah, but they're not really strong enough. Keep them down for next turn. I want to start moving this guy this way. Any word? on war in the west too uh hello super Avenger. well my understanding is and if richard wants if he knows any better than i do my understanding is the team that makes this is now or at some point is more focusing over on steel tigers which is the evolution of the old steel panthers game um that's my understanding is their next major project so i don't know of any significant work on um, war in the West. Well, my time here is nearly up. So um, do stay around because Richard of York is coming up and he will be great to watch. So, but I love streaming here for Slytherin. Oh, Steel Panthers is great. I love it, played it back when it was an SSI game. Um, Love it streaming here on Slytherin, but you can open up a new window and follow me over on Twitch where I stream mostly on the weekends for myself. And I do also have a YouTube channel, as most of us do here, that you can watch me play games and chatter about history and whatnot. So I'm hoping, Richard, you're more or less ready to, um, to go here. I mean, I could stretch it for a minute or two if you want, but otherwise I am ready to hand it off to you let's go for um we'll save this afterwards so uh haven't heard from richard oh no there's a bit of delay here so okay i'm presuming richard is good because he said hi earlier so thank you all